All right. Hey guys, it's a, it's a Thursday afternoon. Everyone just left except me. I'm sitting at Jenny's desk area right here. She takes calls and she deals with the customer quotes and she organizes our routes. And so right back behind her seat, we got these clipboards. For each day of the week for the coming week, here's tomorrow's clipboard. The guys just loaded this stuff on the truck and we're gonna deliver this stuff in the morning. So this represents six stops that we have tomorrow. And I'll show you how full the truck is with these six orders. Let's check it out. And check it out. Here's the orders. All six orders are in there. This big green bag is the 20 by 40 top. There's the pulls for the tent. We use these things you can get on Amazon. They hold pulls into E-Track and we just kind of strap them together so they don't fall out. And then all the way up to the front, you can see tables strapped up there. And everything is in order. So the first delivery is these bar stools and some cocktail tables. And you know, you go back further, we got round tables back there, trash cans. There is a grill here and a rotisserie, patio heaters. There's all kinds of stuff in here, guys. I mean, the whole thing is full. So having a, having a big box truck allows us to get a lot of orders, you know, more than we would in the pickup. What I'm finding with this business, it's really about logistics. It's about capacity. It's about what you're capable of fulfilling. And that really has to do with the truck capacity, the inventory capacity, and the staff capacity. It's really what I've been focusing on building. You know, a lot of guys that have rental companies, what I've found out this season is a lot of guys cancel jobs last minute and the client is left screwed. And it's possibly because they bit off more orders than they can chew, but I, it's one excuse or another. I don't have the staff, I don't have the truck, or I don't have the inventory. Even if you have the inventory, that's the easiest part. It's the staff and the truck. People seem to take for granted. So I've really kind of put a lot of energy into building the functions of the business. How can I get tables and chairs and other equipment to events on time, quickly, in good condition, in an organized fashion? I decided not to work on holidays. And so Jenny, weeks and months out, makes sure to book around those days so that I could give um, the guys a day off and so that we could have our holidays. We just, you know, people can still have an event on a holiday, it's just uh, they're gonna get the delivery the day or two before the holiday and take it, pick up after the holiday. Now, we do have the option, people can pay for after hours or graveyard hours, pick up and delivery, or if they have a specific requirement, we can fulfill those and we've done them. But we charge up the like we just quoted one and they want it on a Sunday, delivered at 5.30 in the morning and picked up that night. Like 50 tables and a hundred and something chairs, I don't know. 50 tables is heavy, so um, there's quite a bit of labor. And it's on a Sunday early in the morning and it's two shifts, so we'd have to come in on a Sunday morning, leave, and then come in on Sunday night and leave. Like Adam the tent guy, he has a philosophy, he's like, quote enough to where it's worth your time. And that's what we did. So. If we don't get it, I'm happy because I don't want to work on a Sunday anyway. So if we get it, then it's like, boom, you know, I think we bid like $800 for delivery. So if they want it, that's the price. And if not, hey, I got my Sunday back. So that's how we do those weekend jobs. On to the, the capacity of inventory. So you may have noticed that we have a lot of other items than we started with, like you saw those bar stools. So we also have a lot more chair options than we started with. Right now, here's our chair selection. So we got the three colors of folding chairs. You got the black, white, and gray. We actually have a bar stool now. We have the Shivari, uh, children's chair, and black. Black seems to be very in demand here in town in our specific market. Now, the gray is the most common chair it it's only it because it's 50 cents less than all the others so it's the the budget chair and everyone wants the gray it matches pretty much any event but if someone specifically wants black or white it's 50 cents more so you may be like Kyle what did you do go buy all these chairs it's insane we have a partnership an exclusive partnership with another company that closed shop they have a lot of inventory that we are gonna now rent out exclusively, just pay them a percentage of the rentals that we get. So that opens our inventory up 
to a lot more items, including catering items, which in the truck you may have seen the rotisserie and the grill. That's a new item. That rotisserie is like $2,000 to buy that, you know, so you could cook a pig on there. You could cook a goat on there. And we now have access to rent those out. It's a pretty sweet deal, man. I mean, I'm hoping that the gentleman that worked this deal with me will want to come on camera someday and we could talk more about it. But that could come in due time. But I just wanted to explain why we have all these new items, you know. Example, chafing dishes. Here's a couple of them. There's two other styles that are not here. They have things like these chalkboards. There's like 20 of each of these. There's dance floor here. There's two styles of dance floor. This is just one we rented out the other day. Coolers, there's a bunch of those. White chairs to bulk up my white chairs. So I have 300 that I started with, and now we have 500 more. And the, the black, we've got 500 of those. There's some other stuff we recently rented. These drink dispensers, um, more round tables, and then also a smaller size of round table. Here's a couple of stage panels. So we've got like 52 of these stage panels. We could do a big old stage. There's a lot more access to a lot of inventory that we didn't have before, and it's not all kept here. So the logistics I have with this partner is we put in our requests for items to be moved to a storage unit that's a mile from here, and he has a giant storage unit, probably the size of my warehouse. Oh yeah, and a lot more tables. Like he used to do gun shows and big events and there's enough table, there's about 600 tables if you to add it to our current inventory that we can now have the capacity to fulfill. It's a very good deal for us, let's just say that. So especially we don't ha have to purchase, put up the money. For example, these 400 and 420 of these Shivari chairs. I don't really wanna put up money for a Shivari chair. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because these don't go out. Um, at least they haven't yet because I haven't really marketed them and I haven't done. So the, the possibility is still there that we could move those. Also, when we get bigger weddings, it's a smart business decision to not have to fork out all the money for those items, test the water, see how what goes out. And it, you know we could always buy the items that do go out frequently. So uh, like white chairs, I know are a no brainer. I'm, I want to have like 3000 or more of those, if not. 5,000, maybe 10,000. It's like, okay, some of these items may not go out a lot yet, but for example, wedding items, we don't really market ourselves as weddings too much yet because our tents aren't really big for a large wedding. So the weddings we get are pretty small, like 50 to 100 people or less. And a lot of weddings have two, 300 people. And so they're not gonna rent the arch from us if they rented the tent from someone else. So you kind of have this like threshold you have to meet before you get some of those jobs. So I'm not counting out the Shivaris yet, but I'm glad I didn't put the money up for them because we can literally rent them out. And you know, pipe and drape, there's enough pipe and drape to do 400 plus booths for a trade show. We've already done a couple of pipe and drape jobs. I love it. It's something you can do in the winter indoors. If there's trade shows going on in the winter indoors, it's easier than setting a tent up. Not a lot of companies have enough pipe and drape to do a trade show. There's maybe two or three companies in town and a lot of companies in Denver that come down here and do those jobs. So yeah, the stage is another pretty interesting item that we've rented a few times already. Uh, just booked one yesterday, like a thousand dollar order for a little stage. Uh, and we have enough stage to put on like a concert and they're adjustable, adjustable height so they can go down as low as like six inches up to 36 inches tall. And you could even rent skirts around those, which we also now have access to stage skirting. So anyway, back to building out the capacity of the business. So we've worked on building the inventory with this new deal that expands the inventory astronomically. I mean, that gives us access to, I don't know, half a million worth of inventory. Staff is a tricky one, right? Everyone complains about staff in the groups and the tent groups. And I, I really think it's a problem with you if you can't get good staff and if, and if you know, people don't want to work for you. It's, if there's another company in your town being successful at it and you're not, maybe it's you. And so just take a look at what you're, how you're treating your employees. What is it like to work for you? Are they getting paid okay? Are you treating them okay? Are you, or are you working them 16-hour shifts? You know, there's two kind of trains of thought on that. Some people like to just work them like slaves and... They have this, they love the hierarchy of being the big man. We all work as a team. 
we're all doing this together. We all have the same goals in mind. Like I buy them lunch a lot and I pay time and a half on weekends and you know, I'm very flexible. If someone needs a doctor's appointment, we'll work around it. And you know, there's three or four people lined up that are wanting the next position for a full-time role. And we don't have those yet, but we have started building out the network to be able to build capacity in that area. Some people talk about hiring family and friends and stuff. There's very little upside and there's a lot of potential downside, but the, the potential downside is higher in my calculated opinion. And the potential downsides are something goes wrong at work, you got now you have drama at home. Or you need to fire someone because they didn't, they're just not working out. Well, you're now firing a friend or a family member. That's, that could destroy your friendship. It could destroy your family member relationship or cause strife in the family. Let me case this in kind of some parameters. Uh, if I have a friend who does a specific skill and that's their career, right? They're really good at that skill. I would hire that person for that skill if needed. For example, I've hired my brother to do some welding on the truck. You know, he had a welder, he helped me out, I pay him. Or I've also paid my dad to build an arch. You've seen that video previously. When it comes to having a full-time crew member on this type of crew where it's very intimate and small and everything's riding on these couple guys to make things run smooth, I just kind of want to avo avoid that if possible. There's not going to be any nepotism. There's not going to have anything like, oh, the boss's buddy is now working for us, so we better be afraid of him because, you know, and then that buddy kind of swings his weight around. I'm not going to have politics like that. I don't want that to be an issue, especially in this new startup that we have. We need to focus on the business. We need to focus on building the functions of the business and not get too distracted. You know, there could be a time in the future where it's like, hey, we got so many tents and stuff. And it's like, hey, I got a friend who just wants some labor or something. And hey, you want to throw in a shift or something? That could be a possibility. But generally as a principle, it's because I love them too much. I don't want to complicate that. You know, if it was a contractor role kind of thing, that's different. Like I said, if they're if they're competent. Now, if it's just like your buddy just bought a camera and he's like, hey, I wanna be a professional photographer. Can I take, can you pay me to do some photo shoot or something? Well, show me your portfolio. You still gotta be competent if I'm hiring you. The last two capacity things, well, one of the things with inventory and everything is the warehouse space. So I mentioned in a previous video that we were looking at signing a, a lease on the next door unit. And today we signed that lease. And so we're getting that unit on October 1st that will double the size of our warehouse. It will also give us a roll-up door next to the dock that doesn't have a dock. So we're gonna have a great area to put customer pickup will call area. And then also over there, the goal is to put in the sinks and the dishwashing unit and bring in all the tabletop items so that we can start renting out tabletop items, which is dishes and all that. But you know, he has things like margarita machines and popcorn machines and cotton candy machines and stuff that needs cleaned a lot and it's kind of messy and I don't want to get into that stuff but he was explaining to me once we have our dishwashing you know capability set up it it's pretty easy money I'm just trying to take advantage of the opportunities that come my way um, that's exciting and then the last piece of this puzzle is the truck that's the other capacity issue so you've seen the truck we have. The other issue with the truck is the one I have is a stick, okay? And I'm the only guy out of this crew who could drive it. So I, the same guy who has all these rental items that I have a deal with, he also has trucks. And he had another 26 footer with only 130,000 miles on it. So the other truck I have right now, the one that you just saw that we loaded up, that's, that was, we got that for 20 grand and it has 350,000 miles on it, okay? This one, the, the new one, has 130,000 miles on it. It's a 2008, and we picked it up for 33 grand. So my original idea was, okay, I'll just sell the old one, which there's a shortage of trucks, so I know I can get 20 grand back out of it. And then it's basically a 13 grand upgrade, right? So that was the original plan, but then I was thinking, you know, all this capacity stuff, we're adding tabletop, we're getting the bigger warehouse. Next year, next season, we wanna do more. And I'm gonna probably be looking for a truck next season if I sell this one now. So I was thinking, don't sell it. So we have two trucks now. And so the plan is next season, one of the guys will have a crew 
in the automatic, and I'll drive Rasputia. That's what we call our truck. What's that? It's Rasputia! <clears throat> And so we'll have two crews. We'll have the ability to do twice as much as what we're doing now. And with the inventory and the staff and the truck and the warehouse and everything, it, it lines up for putting us in a better position next year to be at the size that I kind of want to grow to. And we'll see where it goes from there, you know. But with all this stuff, the, the capacity of business that we could do is over a million dollars a year. So that doesn't mean we're going to do a million a year. It just means that we have now the capacity. And then I can get back on to marketing and business promotion, which I haven't done hardly any of, and the phone will not stop ringing. I haven't marketed the dance floors, I haven't marketed the pipe and drape, I haven't called the event planners, and I haven't called uh, venues that another competitor has lost because they've been dropping the ball. I gotta call them and say, hey, have you, you looking for a new partner? And there's a lot of stuff to do. So, but before I can take on that stuff, I had to build the capacity. Yeah, it puts us in a great position. There's no payments on these trucks. Basically, this truck we use from profits in the business. We are taking a modest salary just to cover our expenses at home. Everything above that will just go back into the business. I'm focusing on the future. I'm, I'm really playing the tortoise here. I hear of competitors that are screwing customers and you know taking deposits and then canceling orders and stuff like that. And I just They could do the rabbit thing if they want. I'm gonna just do the tortoise thing. I'm gonna treat every customer amazingly. We're getting word of mouth now. Everyone who's ever worked with us, with the exception of a couple of Karens who didn't like creases in their linens, loves us. And they love Jenny and they love the crew. So right now we're just building all the legwork, fulfilling customers' orders. Anyway, in a future video, I will show you when we knock the wall down and get the next store unit, I will show you the storage unit and what the items are in there. And anything else you guys are interested in getting an update on, just hit me up. Just post a comment and let me know what you want to see me talk about if you want to see me talk. I mentioned before how I wanna come off the crew and get into the office and work on all the business development. I can say that it's been invaluable being on the crew. It's actually fun. Like, I, I don't want to not be on the crew because it's not fun. Like, I, I've got to see so many cool places that I have never been in town. Like, there was this Count Chocula castle on the top of a mountain in a hill, and, and we've gotten to see some famous people, and we've gotten to be, we went to this 20,000 square foot mansion, and delivered chairs, you know, and setting up tents, we're doing a wine festival next week, you know, it's just fun, like, you get to meet, every, you're showing up, you're bringing the party, everyone's happy to see you, you're out in the fresh air, it's a new scene every day, you're not looking at the same spreadsheets, like, it's fun, right, so, I think it's been invaluable to get that experience, because I want to know what the crew is going through, how it, what it's like to set tents up, what it's like to move tables, I'm not going to be doing that the rest of my life, but I can, and I will jump in when needed, you know, while we need it. And also it's, you know, I'm not talking from an ivory tower. I know what it's like. I'm talking from experience now. I can train people to do the stuff that we need done. And so I think that's a step you can't avoid. So, I, you know, but in, in order to start getting the orders in for the pipe and drape and getting the orders in for the dishes and all that, I got to get off the truck for a while. Luckily, or unluckily, whatever you want to call it, the slow season is coming up, and that's my goal. Like when we don't have deliveries, my, I'll, I will have a new office in the next door unit that'll be quieter than being out in the closet. And I'll work on business development. I'm gonna work on more marketing, more ads. I've barely done any ads. I've done no Facebook ads. In my previous job, I used to run quarter million dollar a month ad budgets. I know how to do ads. We, right now I have two campaigns, one for tents and one for tables and chairs on Google ads. Um, they used to call it AdWords back in the day, but now it's called Google Ads. Just those two campaigns, I still need to make a campaign for trade shows. I need to make a campaign for, for catering equipment, like chafing dishes, and for dance floors, and wedding arches, and dunk tanks, and, um, and also retargeting ads. I haven't done any retargeting ads. I haven't done any Facebook video ads. I need to hire a drone guy to come film some of our tents with a drone and make a little video ad. I, I need to create more, uh, like a fall catalog that I can send out to all the vendors, showing them all our new inventory. I need to make calls. This colleague that I'm working with has hundreds and hundreds of customers in his database that I can call. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, and it's also gonna keep the guys on the trucks busy. 
by me doing this stuff. It's not easy. And I'd say one of the hardest things is moving forward on things. Don't just get a bunch of shiny object syndrome and, and say you're gonna do something. Come up with a plan and actually follow through with it and do it competently. And if you're interested in following our journey, hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment, tell me what you wanna see uh, me talk about. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time, bye.